Back at it again with a one-on-one -on -one interview. Shout out to my guys over at Ambush Sports Network for all of their support. Check them out at Ambush Sports on Twitter for all things sports related. Today I'm joined by one of Canada's top mixed martial artists, John McDessie. John, how are you? I'm doing great, my man. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. I appreciate you taking the time today. Being a fellow Canadian, you're somebody who I've always maintained an eye on to see what you're doing and what you're up to, so thank you. Um, it's my pleasure, my man. John, growing up in Halifax, getting into mixed martial arts at a young young age in terms of your kickboxing and your karate, what was really your first exposure to the UFC? <clears throat> it's all, it's all. I mean, getting getting into the UFC is like a dream come true, you know what I mean? Uh, doing martial arts since six years old, and uh, and also, uh, you know, my whole life uh, I dedicated myself to martial arts. One thing led to another, one thing led to another, and. Uh, you know, I'm just very grateful to be able to fight at a high level. Yeah, that's exactly it. And and, and growing growing up in Halifax as, as as somebody with Lebanese background, growing up in your childhood, what was it that got you into in, into karate and whatnot? Was it something that your that your family had pushed? Was it something that is somewhat of a family legacy, or was it something that was new for yourself? Well, actually, martial arts is a pretty funny thing. You know, I started. At the age of six, my older brother took me to the gym, took me to the dojo, and uh, and uh, you know it was uh, something that I fell in love with instantaneously. And I, uh, when I was older, uh, I was able to take myself to the gym at the age of 17 after high school. Once I finished high school, once I made a decision to pursue fighting, I uh, I said uh, I took myself to the gym and I just kept fighting, kept on practicing, kept on learning new disciplines. You know, from taekwondo to karate to American kickboxing, and then I got, then I, uh, then I went to uh, try start to learn jiu jitsu and wrestling, Muay Thai and boxing, and uh, you know, it, 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 I feel like, you know, I feel like it was my destiny to become an MMA fighter. Yeah, and, and you mentioned their kickboxing, and I was going to ask you about that. Bef before you were into MMA, you were very successful in kickboxing, am am amassing a great record of twenty two and zero. What led you to making that switch from kickboxing, something where you were so successful, into something that was going to be a completely new challenge for yourself? Yeah, I mean, honestly, at that moment, I wasn't really thinking about, you know, uh, I wasn't really thinking about switching careers. I was actually, my passion was kickboxing, you know, about the way I, I grew up watching K1 and, uh, and, and you know, that glory style. And um, so... But in North America, here in Canada, kickboxing was dying out. You know, it wasn't really a lot of money. You can't really make good money in that sport. And uh, I don't know. I didn't. I didn't have a manager. I didn't have a good trainer that can just guide me in the right direction. And uh, so basically, uh, I got. Uh, that's when I heard about MMA. That's when I heard about TriStar. And and here in Montreal, here I was. You know, I was raised in Montreal, so everybody was kind of trending towards MMA. You know, it was it was the next big thing. You know, guys like David Loiseau, Joyce and Pierre were making a name of making a name. So I decided to follow that to follow that route. That's awesome. And then after you started your MMA career, you were again very successful with your first professional loss not coming until you were in the UFC at UFC one forty. How was it that you were able to handle your first loss when it was being at such a the the pinnacle of the sport, the highest level of the sport when your first loss did come? Yeah, I mean, nobody, you know, in professional fighting, in professional, in any sports, nobody wants to lose, you know, I mean, everybody wants to win in general, in life in general. So, um, how did I handle it? I mean, yeah, for sure, it was a very tough time. Uh, I wasn't mentally prepared. Nobody really prepared me. A lot of people kind of, uh, like I said, the business of MMA is a very complex, you know, people kind of, it's hard to find a good team, hard to find a good entourage to, to keep the fighter disciplined and to keep the fighter motivated and to, you know, most importantly, the discipline part, you know, you know, uh, you, you get a couple of wins under your belt and, uh, you know, the trainers start lacking, uh, the, the training partners start to lack, you know, and, and it, it was very difficult. You know, you gotta, the more, the more successful, the harder you have to work, you know what I mean? And, uh, and I learned that the hard way. So, you know, everything is about trial and error. Everything in you know, life is an experience. You learn, you live, and you learn. And all I can do as a human being is to, to focus on becoming better each day. Yeah, and, and, and in there, John, you you talked about how you had been training at TriStar, and now you've obviously you've moved to train alongside the likes of Anthony Pettis and Paul Paul Felder with Duke Rufus. If you look at UFC Nashville, your, guys, your last event, 
although you may not have had the best performance that you were looking for, to me it was still a very intriguing matchup in the sense of what your guy's striking was able to do. But but obviously Showtime had a massive KO. And do you, do you enjoy being on cards that your some of your teammates are fighting on as well? Does that add more to the build up of the card? Yeah, of course, hundred percent. I mean, fighting with uh, fighting alongside Anthony Pettis, where you know he has a lot of experience. You know, Duke Rufus is a great coach, great mentor, a lot of experience. So of course, it helps boost my confidence and it helps my preparation, training with him, preparing for for fights. So uh, it's always better to fight with uh, with your teammates and uh, versus being alone. Yeah, that's awesome. And then, John, looking at something that's maybe a little bit outside of the, the octagon itself, you've talked about in the past that you, uh, you're you journaling and kind of keeping a log, so to speak, of, of, of your experiences and the sacrifices of being a fighter. Is this something that you plan on turning into a book or plan on maybe turning into a movie of some sort? Or is this more of a personal thing that you keep for yourself? Yeah, I mean, yeah, for sure. It's been four years now. Three, four years I've been focusing on personal growth. Um I, I, for one, I'm very interested in, uh, you know, because physically we, we stop growing, you know, you know, we, we get a certain, you know, our age, you know, things, life takes you to a certain direction, you know, so for me, uh, uh, I, I, I felt like I needed to give back, you know, I, I wanted to do something that is uh, more fulfilling to the soul, you know, meaning uh, writing a book about uh, all the sacrifice, uh, dedicating yourself to uh, martial arts, and and uh, if you want to go high level in the, the game, mix martial arts, and uh, you know for the for the younger youth, you know I try to set examples for the younger kids watching guys like us on television because people kind of they forget about what it's, you know they, they look at the fighters, they see the lifestyle, they see the cars, they see the money, they see the the whole uh, you know the the business part. You know the whole image, but they forget. Nobody really cares about behind the scenes, the the blood, sweat, and tears, the dedication, the all that stuff that kids kind of lack. You know what I mean? Because a lot of kids go to the gym and they quit very easily because it, you know things don't go their way. Um, so I, I try to give. A, I always try to. You know, if you look at my fights, I always show respect to my opponents. I don't talk tra- trash talk. You know, right now on Twitter, I got some guys calling me out. Some 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 you know little punks. You know calling me out, you know, I mean, I, I get the sport, I understand it's business, you know, people want to talk trash and people want to, you know, uh, call out, but at the end of the day, it's all about integrity, you know, if, if, if I'm the guy, if I'm the guy preaching about being a martial artist and, and living a samurai spirit, you know, being loyal, you know, uh, and having integrity, you know, and that, that's the book, you know, my book, I'm writing a book on, on, on my journey the in becoming a champion. I might not, I might not, Maybe I'll never become a world champion, like on like with the title. But at the end of the day, championship for me it's a mindset. It's living every day as a championship. You know, I know a lot of world champions they get the belt, but their lifestyle, their person, their personal life is, is is a lot of drama, a lot of headaches. So I mean, like look, look at Conor McGregor. You know, what I mean, he's the perfect example. This guy went to the top. You know, was world champion, has the whole country behind him, made millions of dollars, talked his way, he fought his way. And now he's going through so much lawsuit and all, all this bullshit that he's going through with the drugs and the partying and and all this crazy shit, you know, all the you know. What I mean? So at the end of the day, for me, it's all about it's about keeping staying humble, staying grounded, minding my own business, and and, uh, and giving and, and most importantly is is to reach out to the younger youth, reach out to the kids who are who struggle because essentially fighting is a poor man's sport, you know. I mean, it's, it's uh, you gotta be. It's a different state of mind, you know. Fighting is mental. You have to have that desire, the willpower to go to uh, to endure pain, to endure hardship, and sometimes solitude. You know, a lot of times I've been uh, no social life because you're in the gym. You know, your fi- your friends want to go out, your friends want to go have want to have fun, they want to go party. You know, and you have to go to the gym. You gotta you gotta you gotta make things happen. You have to you gotta. You gotta have a vision. You know, I mean, these are these are things that that uh, the people, the public, forget about. Yeah, and it's it's so refreshing to hear somebody speak with a mindset such as that. Exactly like you mentioned, you see the Conor McGregor's, you see the Colby Covingtons, these guys who are 
who are making it out to be something almost more than it is and and it's it's their focus is on things that aren't exactly the spiritual aspect of it or the growing aspect or the teaching aspect of it and I, I, I mentioned earlier that I'd spoke with Cajun Johnson earlier this week and when I spoke with Cajun he spoke very much in that same language that you're speaking of in the fact of giving back to people giving back to the sport coaching others and not just in inside of the octagon or inside of the cage but coaching them in life and teaching them to be a better person instead of just a better fighter is this something i know cajun is obviously somebody who was at tristar montreal as well is this something that has been passed down to you guys from faras sahabi or is this something that just you guys have have kind of learned on your own yeah no this is this is personal like i said personal growth meaning uh I know I know Cajun very well. We uh, we trained a lot together. We spent some time together. I mean, Cajun is a, it's his nature. You know, I, I, everybody has a personality, their character. You know, I'm uh, I'm just it's a choice that I made. You know, the the, the crazy part is because the, the reality part. You know, everybody goes into the fighting business for different reasons. You know, and uh, I'm just saying truth to myself. I'm just being honest. I mean, I don't need to be a fighter to have nice things. And like we all have our superficial side. You know, I, I don't. I was growing up my whole life, you know, I, I did businesses with my family, my brother. I always drove nice cars. I was always dressed nice. I never, I never, it was never about fighting, you know. That's not, for me, martial arts saved my life. It gave me a purpose. It gave me direction. And also, if I'm going to preach out, if I'm going to show an image that is not really me, then, then the only thing I'm doing is lying to myself, you know. So for me, it's all about, I don't, I don't first, first it's about God, but, you know, at the, at the end of the day, it's about me and God's relationship. I, that he comes first, you know, he knows the truth, you know, because I mean? at the end of the day, we're all going to die in this earth. Money doesn't follow us. The, uh, uh, the nice things don't follow us. So it's about a legacy. It's about leaving a legacy behind, you know, and if I can, if I can be something good, positive, and uh, show a uh, sportsman, be a, you know, be a good role model to the, young, to the youth, that's my goal. That, that gives me motivation. So when I have young kids, that send me messages on my fan page. You know, when I have fans send me messages, when I have kids, like I was at, I was at the Ottawa UFC and, uh, and uh, you know, young kids, they come up to me and they, uh, they want to take a picture and all that stuff. So it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing feeling, you know, to, to sh- people show appreciation. You see, you know, it's not only about the fighting. They, they, they know the, the, the hard work, the dedication, all that stuff, you know what I mean? So, I don't know. It's a combination of things, to be honest with you. But uh, to, to answer your question, me and Cajun, that's more of a personal. Uh, it's more personal. It's not, it has nothing to do with Faraz. It has nothing to do with Tristar. Everybody's martial arts is individual sport. That's why it's one on one. It's a pure sport from all sports because it's one on one combat. Because you can't. It's not. It's not a team sport. You know. Yeah, you have a gym. You go to a gym. You have trainers. You have coaches. You have other training partners. But essentially, it's one on one because you're in the octagon by yourself. So. It's it's that this is why for me, out, out UFC MMA is the most toughest sport in the world. It's the most underrated sport. It's the highest level of skills. You need to match multiple skills in one sport versus one skill. You know, you look at boxing, you look at other sports, you, you master one discipline, maybe two. But MMA is for me is the ultimate. It's the ultimate sport. That's why it's called Ultimate Fighting Championships. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. And as you talk there, you talk about growth and you talk about life fulfillment. And I'll just quickly lastly ask you here, you also previously mentioned about fighters calling you out that maybe aren't fights that exactly you're looking for. And then today I did see on on Twitter, you mentioned you mentioned the names of Jim Miller and Joe Lozon about how those would be fights that would fulfill you and they, they would give you a more, more strive towards the legacy that you are trying to build. Is, does that all kind of fall in line with exactly what you're saying about life fulfillment, creating a legacy, as opposed to being the flashy one who responds to all of these fighters that are calling you out? Like, if you, if you look, if you look at my history with the UFC, you know, I, w- I would fight guys. I would fight Sam Stump, Darren Pushtank. I would fight, uh, you know, some credible opponents. You know what I mean? And then they'll give me a newcomer. You know, and 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 I and for me, I had no motivation, and I, and. The business part of fighting, you know, you, you know, every day you gotta fight. You have to fight whoever they give you. You know, uh, so I've been through that. I've been through that route. You know, I, I, I don't. I'm not a guy who tweets a lot. I'm not a guy who's gonna go on social media because at the end of the day, social media is all full of shit. You know, I mean, it's just superficial. You know, it's not really, it's not reality. You know, so I try to avoid social media. But 
I was kind of fed up of everything that was going on, you know, with the whole social media thing. So, you know, especially this guy Nazrat. You know, this guy Nazrat. He, he he was my training partner. He, he was he was the guy. He, he was the guy. Uh, you know, uh, he was the guy helping me get ready for my fights. You know, what I mean, this guy was uh, licking my ass on, when I was a TriStar. I was helping him out. I was nice to him, respectful. And this guy's calling me out. You know, like this, these guys have no class. This guy, I didn't, he didn't even deserve. I'm at a point with my management team. I don't know the, the guy doesn't even deserve my uh, for me to share the octagon with him. You know, let him win some fights, let him fight some big names, and then you can come back to me. You know, I, I'm in the game for, for almost ten years now, eight years in the UFC. You know, I fought top fighters, I fought top guys in my division, and uh, I just want to fight guys with big names. I want to get that. I want to renegotiate my contract. You know, I want to get uh, I want to get paid more. I want to fight bigger names, and I want guys that that will give me that motivation. Fighting these guys, fighting these guys, have one fight, two fights. You know, at the end of the day, it's a business, right? People don't understand. I don't need to fight. This is a business at the end of the day. So for me, it's about making money and uh, fighting the bigger names. John, I I can't thank you enough for your honesty. I can't I can't thank you enough for giving us that inside look at exactly that, creating a legacy, fulfilling yourself, and, and creating something that others can look up to and follow. So, John, I, thank you very much for your time. I appreciate it. Um, as a fellow Canadian, I cannot wait to see you back inside the octagon. I w- wish you nothing but the best in chasing those new contracts, chasing those bigger fights, and continuing to build that legacy of one of the top mixed martial artists in Canadian history. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure, man. Awesome. That is John McDessie, everybody.